Hello interpreters, this is Marty. Today I'm going to show you a short video on how to set up Simul Booth alongside Zoom or any other web conferencing platform that you will be providing interpretation over. And this video was requested by many interpreters around the world who wants to know the full capability of Simul Booth. So let's get started. As you can see that I've already set up my workspace with a mock Zoom meeting on the left-hand side because there's just me in it, so I'm not going to join audio, I'm not going to start the video. This is just for demonstration purposes. And imagine that this is the meeting that you will be interpreting for with a partner, and you want to set up Simul Booth so that you and your, your partner can see and hear each other while interpreting over Zoom. First of all, let's start looking for Simul Booth. Find it in my docking station. I'm going to get it up and running. You can see that this is the first interface that you will see when you open it. And you can click New Booth. And here's the copy URL button. And this is the URL that you can send to your partner either via your iMessage uh, text or send it via email if you're not on a Mac system. So I'm gonna click Inner Booth and here I am. I'm in this booth with an ID of that and that will be part of that link that you sent to your partner. Let's just say that your partner just told you that, hey, I didn't receive the link and you have already entered the booth and you have missed the initial copy URL entry link before you enter the booth. It's actually quite simple. You can click this booth uh, interface setup button and the booth URL is right there. You can copy that URL, send it to your partner in whatever method that you send it to them last or maybe a different one since they didn't receive that last one. So, okay, first let's do a UI tour. Now, those of you who are already familiar with Simul Booth, you can skip to the next section where we do our normal status check. And for those of you who have not seen Simul Booth before, let me give you a quick tour of the interface. As you can see, it is very simple. And you can see from the lower left-hand corner, we have control your microphone, we have control your video camera. We have a chat function with a little carrot up here with one-click messages. I will talk more about that. We'll have this really weird button that you don't see anywhere else, which is the switch signal button. Of course, we have the exit. And on the upper left-hand corner, we have the system menu. And I'm going to talk about both of these functionalities and all the shortcut, key, uh, shortcut keys that are available. We have this little button, which controls the volume you hear from your partner. And lastly, this little carrot pointing down, and that is actually the sound that you that controls where you want to hear the sound. Well, if you have multiple different devices like, like me right here. But today, again, I'm just using my normal headphone setup with a lapel mic, so I'm going to select headphones. Okay, now back to our normal run of business. So the first thing you would do once you open up Simul Booth is to do a status check. First of all, we want to look at our microphone to make sure it's selected correctly. So I hover over this microphone and then this little carrot and I can see that it's the external microphone here. And since today I'm using a external headphone with a lapel mic setup that I customized myself, and this is the correct setup for me in this particular case. Make sure that you select the right device or the right setup for yours. And if you have a setup, of course you will know what it looks like and what it's called. And with that, that is correct. And then let's look at the camera setup. Now, for me, this is just the normal MacBook default setup. Now, if you have external cameras, it will show up here. There will, there will be multiple options and you're just going to click this radio button uh, right next to it. Since mine, there's only one, I don't have much to worry about. Everything else, other things seems to work correctly. Then I'm going to move up here to the sound output devices. And this is 
where you can customize Simo Booth to send your, your booth mates sound. And since in my case, I just have a custom setup out of the normal headphone jack of my Mac, the headphone jack is correct. You might or might not have as complicated of a list that I do. Of course, there's the test sound button right here. And if you click it, you'll be able to hear a sound just to make sure that once you select different devices, you can click this test sound and see if it's working for you. And let's just say you just plugged in a new device in there and you don't see it on this list. You can also click this refresh button, which will refresh the list for you. And you should see the new device that you plugged in. Okay. With that, we have done our initial check and we will be just waiting for our partner to arrive. Now, since this is a mock conference, so I'm going to call a friend from the past, me from yesterday, to help me conduct this demo. Okay, now that me from yesterday has joined the booth, let's demonstrate some of the more cooler functions in Simo Booth. And the first one, if you remember, is this peculiar looking handover button that we customize ourselves. And this is a button that where you can use to conduct the handover process with your partner. A note here is that we designed this in a way that it doesn't matter whether you want the active interpreter to initiate or the passive interpreter to initiate, you can work that out with your partner and in a way appropriate to your particular language set and your culture. So let's just say that I want to initiate the handover process. All I need to do is click this handover button and you will see your screen kind of grayed out but still transparent and you have this me switch now button. And that means that you're the one that initiated the switch now button. Down here, you can see that your screen is kind of grayed out and it says you're initiating and the handover button is blinking. Now, once your partner click this blinking button right here, that should be the signal where the partner takes over the handover process. So it is basically a toggle button where it starts blinking and it's kind of in this transitional period. And once the other partner clicks it, it clears everything that should signal the end of the transition process. So let's do it in reverse. Let's just say the partner is now initiating the handover. And you can see that you hear a little ping as well as you get this pop-up button I'm sorry, the pop-up window, if your settings allow it, I can cancel this one out. And you can see that here, the grayed out screen has the little note saying that the booth mate is requesting to switch now. And this is when, once you click this blinking handover button, and in fact, anywhere within the Simo booth window, it signals the transition is complete and you have completed the handover process. Okay, so everything is now clear. The handover is complete. Whether whatever you should start interpreting now or your partner start interpreting now is based on your own particular language set and how you normally do things. Okay, let's go into some of the more cooler functions in Simo Booth. Let's just say that we completed the handover process and it is my partner now that should start interpreting. But you're not hearing your partner. And the way you know what's going on is that you can see this little red button up on top with a microphone and a slash across it. And that basically means what's happening on your partner's side. And this applies to each partner, which means that if you have two booth mates on each of their windows, uh, window frame, there will be a signal here to indicate that whether they have muted themselves or not. And Normally in any web conferencing platform, it's just telling you that they mute it and there's nothing you can do. But in a case where you're supposed to be working together in a booth and they have muted themselves and forgotten to unmute, that's a problem. It defeats the purpose of having a back channel where you can hear your partner. And this is something unique to Simo Booth where we allow you to remotely unmute your partner. Now, make sure that you work out this courtesy thing between you and your partner ahead of time, because this might 
be kind of intrusive, but it is necessary in an interpreting environment. You know, what you can do is to go ahead and click this button and it will unmute your yes, partner. Yes. Or one, alternatively, one, two, you can three, hit the right three, one, button three, on your mouse one, two, three, or your trackpad and you can unmute one, two, unmute Bootmate. Now let's one, two, just say one, two, three, the situation is the exactly the opposite and you have completed the handover and now it's your turn which is me who should start interpreting but me from yesterday decided to take this opportunity to either practice my banjo or i don't really know how to play the banjo or a bagpipe i don't know that either and that will disturb me tremendously and this is an instance where the other button the mute booth mate button can be useful and in that instance if they forgot to mute themselves and they have a lot of background noise or they're practicing an instrument while you're interpreting you can click the mute booth mate button and you'll mute them okay now that is one of the unique features of simo booth Another cool thing that we can do is in this chat, but chat button, while I can send a normal chat message, just like any chat room function, the, one of the unique things that we can do is that we can send one-click messages and also customize our own one-click messages. And a common scenario would be, you know that in Zoom, your partner has, did not turn on their mic because you could see it from the participants list, or that you can see that also from the participants list that they're interpreting into the wrong channel. And this is when you can send these quick mic on or switch language button to remind them to switch to the right channel. And the way that it will show up on their end, let me show it from the remote. Let me have me yesterday do the same thing. It's going to be a ping and also a pop-up message just like before and another ping for switch language in the same way. And you can escape out of these if you have the pop-up or just click this X at the corner to delete. Lastly, a cool feature is that we can customize these one-click messages. And the way you do that is to click this plus button on the top and you'll know, say you can add a one-click message. You know, I'd say maybe like, hey, your cat's in the frame or whatever, or your, or your dog's in the frame if you're, or your kid. And that's when we can have our unique kind of interaction and without having the time delay of typing in the message itself. Okay, now that's the main core functionality of Simo Booth, and there's just a few couple of customizations that we can do here for your preference. Uh, one of the features is that we know some interpreters do not like to hear that ping, they find it to be quite disruptive, while others also find the pop-up quite disruptive. And the way and there is a way that we can disable them if you find that to be more preferable. And the way to do that is to go into system settings and you can see there's the enable notification sound and the use pop-up notification toggle button that I have enabled in my particular use case. And you can totally disable them. You can turn them off. And now when your partner requests a handover, you won't hear the sound, but you'll still hear, you still see the grayed out screen and the blinking handover button. Okay, that is that is it. And I'm going to say bye to me from yesterday. And he will sign off. And that concludes our demonstration today on how to use Simul Booth for a remote meeting. And now on the last note, I just want everybody to know that all of us here at Simul greatly appreciate everything you have done to help us get Simo Booth out and available for all the interpreters of the world in this very unique kind of remote interpretation setup environment. And we couldn't have made it without you. We are, are now in over 50 countries in the world and we couldn't have made it without your support. Once again, thank you very much. And please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or if there's anything I can help you with. Bye-bye.